So, you know, like, if you watch a, a movie, like, or a stunt movie or anything like that, the person looks at the camera and says, do not try this at home. You ever seen something like that? All the time. <laughs> well, this is one of those videos. <laughs> do not try this at home. Okay, guys, I am going to tell you about how we disassembled our bassinet for the purpose of washing it, thoroughly washing it to prepare it for a new baby. And in this video, I am going to do it again and I am going to reassemble it with detail for you guys, but don't try this at home. Unless you want to. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to the couch. I'm Melissa. I'm Tim. And this is Couch Mom Club. On my channel, you'll find tips and tricks to help moms to get off the couch and into life. And in today's video, we are going to talk about the bassinet. And I'm gonna recap how to take it apart, I'm not gonna show you how to wash it because that should be pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Plus we did it in the other video. Right, and we'll link that right here. And then I am going to put it back together in a little bit more detail. Don't try this at home, guys. I'm gonna show you how I did it just because I think it's helpful information, but you don't have to do it. <laughs> you definitely don't have to do it. So a few months ago, actually nine months ago, we were expecting our third baby and I wanted to wash my bassinet instead of repurchasing um, a bassinet or another bassinet. As you know, these things can cost a lot of money. I think the last time we checked it was like 400 and something dollars. But ain't nobody got $400 just to kick around like that. I sure as hell didn't. So I didn't want to spend that $400 on buying a new one. Well, the thing is, when you have three kids and each one of them only uses it for six months, if that, then why do you need it? It's still new, it's still yeah. brand new. I know that there are people that say, you know, the manual says you're not supposed to take it apart. I hear you, but sometimes people don't follow instructions <laughs> to a T. <tea. laughs> And I certainly did not follow that guideline. And for those of you who follow manuals and follow um, instructions to the T and all the rules of life uh, to the letter, you know, you guys are angels and uh, deserve a halo. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> I'm not funny. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyways, um, I want to say a few things. Um, we have three babies four years old, two years old, and now nine months old, and all three slept in the bassinet. Um, we had no issues. I didn't feel that they were in any kind of harm. <laughs> A lot of the comments on that, the old video were kind of funny. I don't wanna, I, I'm not, making fun of anybody, I'm not laughing outright at anybody, but they were a little bit funny to me. Some of them were a little bit offensive too. Um, especially there was one guy who said um, that the ethical thing to do would have been either to take the video down because it's impossible to do it or to um, show the steps. I didn't leave out the details from the other video because of any ethical reason. It's not because I found it difficult or that it wasn't doable. In my mind at the time, it was just do it in reverse. You know, like you took it apart, you should be taking note of how you disassembled it. So just go back. Yeah, people accused us of not showing how it goes back together because they thought that we didn't successfully put it back together. But in that video, you can see it in the background. Yes. And, and it's right here. And it's right there. So. <laughs> And you know, it is what it is. I get it. I, I don't want to di dismiss anybody who had a difficult time because there are some tricky pieces to it. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the first video, but I, I should have, cause it is tricky. I mean, of course, if you're doing this alone, it might be tricky. If you are not necessarily mechanically inclined or you don't really regularly use tools, you might find it a little tricky. Not Notwithstanding, it's doable. Everybody's going to find that they either can do it or they can't do it. And just because you can't do it doesn't mean that it can't be done. I am here to say sorry to those of you who found my video extremely vague. For those of you who found it helpful, I'm so glad that I was able to help you and save you 400 some odd dollars. And for those of you who found it difficult, I wanna thank you for the feedback and thank you for the engagement. And of course, to the guy who was like, you benefited enough. What did he say? 
He was like, um, the, he wanted us to take the video down because we, we profited, profited enough. Yes, profited. That video made a whopping $89. $89. And as you can tell, it's still not enough to buy a brand new bassinet. So guess what? I'm going to disassemble it. I'm going to wash that bad boy and I'm going to put it back together and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. I'm going to take this thing apart. <laughs> you want to um, take out the mattress and anything else that you have in in the bassinets because you're going to get to all these stuff to take off the fabric. So I'm going to flap open these things to expose the hardware. These little things, you want to push it. And release it. Yeah, that'll work. There you go. These things are labeled A, B, C, and D. And I think you should remove them in that order. If you remove it just enough like this, but don't take it all the way out, it's going to make it really difficult for the other side to come off. So I would remove that all the way first, and then you're able to do the other side. So I would go according to the alphabet, A, B, C, and then D, and remove them all the way. Let me tell you ladies, if you have long nails, or you're wearing your natural nails, even if they're short, you could stand to chip a nail or two. I just chipped my nail. Sorry I wasn't uh, more transparent about that before, but if you don't want to use your nails, or if you do one and you're losing power in your arms like I did, you might want to use a pen or something that is sharp enough so that you can push that little pin through and pull it apart. Be careful because you don't want to push the pin through all the way so that it shifts. If it does shift, you can get it back out, but that's another added headache that you might not want. So go ahead and do it very gently. And if you are using an object, don't push it and move it. Just push it so that it can just be released. You want to take out your... Um, I guess these would be the railings and everything is labeled so you'll know exactly where to put it back in so that shouldn't be a problem right so there's a little button here that helps you to take the bassinet part right off the stand so you can just push that and remove it and uh, that's pretty easy you can do this before or after you take out the railings it's up to you these sides you want to take off by pressing that in here and removing it. Very easy to come off. So there's six screws that hold the base on. So you wanna make sure you get all six screws out. So I wanna make mention of the fact that the screws that you took out do not actually screw into the particle board of the base. They're screwing into the plastic part of the base which the threads are there and you can't really screw it up unless you're like trying to screw it in crooked or something. Or if you over tighten, you can ruin it as well, but you don't want to do that. The next thing I'm going to do is just remove the sound machine part and the, the lights and the music that all comes from this comes right off two screws, put those aside together so you don't lose them. This piece is not holding any structural integrity. Um, it doesn't weaken or make the bassinet less safe, in my opinion, because it is not actually meant to secure the bassinet, but to hold the other part in place. Something I want to mention about this part is that you can easily put it in upside down. Once you put it in upside down, this part is going to stick out. So... If it's sticking out by the time you get to put it back together, that means you've put this in backwards. It needs to go this way so that this part is flush with the board. If it's sticking out like this, you've put it in backwards. So make sure that when you're reassembling it, it's flush on the proper side. But you wanna be very, very gentle when you're fishing it out of here because you don't wanna break the fabric, you wanna just take your time. Once you take your time to get it out, as soon as one part comes out, the rest of it is so easy to remove. The idea of washing this material or cleansing it is not 
necessarily something that you want to do every single time it becomes soiled. Even if you look on the website of the Halo Bassinet, you're going to see that it shows you how to spot wash. And this is for when your baby is spitting up or even if they have a blowout or anything like that. But sometimes when you're storing it in hopes to use it for another baby or maybe you want to sell it and it's secondhand and new to you but used for another child, it might be smart to actually take it off and wash it. This should probably be done once per use in terms of once per child. But as your baby is using it, if you're like me who only used it for about the first four months of the baby's life, you wanna just spot wash it if it gets soiled. But I realized that I neglected to give you some details about how to reassemble it. And I feel like um, I owe you all that to, to really put it together so that you can see how I reassembled it. The first time we did it, my husband did it, and um, he had no issues with it. This time around, I'm physically doing it. I'm able to sit on the floor and do all of the things because the last time I was severely pregnant and didn't want to do it. So it was on my honeydew list, and he did it, and he did it with no problems at all. But we did not film, our, our, I think we did film it, but we didn't incorporate any of the footage um, in the video. And I just thought, you know, you do it once and just, do it in reverse and put it back together. In my mind, I thought that was simple enough, but it was an oversight on my part for not actually showing you on film how to put it together. So I'm gonna do that right now um, for all of those who were quite upset with me and said it's a scam and that's the very reason why I didn't film it and put it in the video. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not the case. I'm gonna show you how I did it now. Um, and I do want to mention that putting it back together for me was fairly simple. Um, yeah, there are a few little tricky bits, but you just have to be a little bit more gentle and, you know, just have a little bit more patience. I would advise not doing this in the postpartum stages. Try to do it before you have your baby, just so that if you do run into problems, you're not scrambling um, when the baby has already arrived. I know that we can't always control that but if you can do this before baby comes so that once baby comes you are not struggling or scrambling around trying to figure it out all right so i'm going to quickly put it back together and then one thing i do want to mention that if you are going to store it away you don't necessarily have to strip it down like this in order to store it i would store it with all the hardware intact put all the screws back in and put the fabric back on and then you can put it in a plastic or something that keeps it safe um, you don't necessarily have to store it all taken apart like this let's put it back together making sure that we're not putting anything upside down we're putting everything where it was before and in perfect fashion something to remember here too do not under no circumstance do not over tighten your screws once you over tighten your screws you're just it's just a bad thing so don't do it okay so you're gonna get one side Oop, there's some velcro you're gonna get one side completely in take your time do not rush because you want everything to line up okay so sometimes if something is like askew you're gonna see loose parts or parts that are overstretched it fits in here perfectly so if something is not working right it's because it just needs to be adjusted a little bit okay so you're going to put one side fully in and then slowly work the next side over and then put that last final piece in as well so it doesn't go here it doesn't go like this it goes like this don't create new holes okay and you don't need to make any new parts it comes the way it is just screw it back the way that it was do not over tighten i can't express that enough another tip too when you're doing multiple screws is to start all of them and then tighten them all because if you tighten one the other two are not going to line up right so as soon as you feel a little bit of resistance stop it is secure you don't need to continue to harp on it like this is secure this is not going anywhere all right the next thing i'm going to do is put the music thingy back on you're going to do the same thing you have two screws here 
put them both in a, a little bit and then go in and tighten them making sure that you are lining everything up where they ought to be lined up yeah. if you do have a partner to help you hold this part that's great <laughs> okay so that's in battery pack is in okay i'm gonna put this back on that's on it's secure it's not going anywhere unless you push that in so here you want to make sure that you're aligning it. You have two placeholder pieces here that stick out a little bit more. So these ones are gonna go in your big holes so that it's aligned. And then you uh, find the middle, put it in. Just kind of, you saw that? As soon as I swiveled it around, I found the piece. So once it's just in, once it's in, not aligned you're gonna feel the gaps and stuff but you just have to move it so that it's in it just slides right into place so you'll see here is the alignment piece it's right there and there so that's the piece that finds its place so that it stays put now you want to use your screws and um, put them back in this is that piece that I talked to you about earlier if there's a part that is sticking up it means you put it on backwards. So you need to go back out and flip it and then make sure that it's flush so that your when your mattress goes on top, everything is good, baby's comfortable, and there are no pieces sticking out. So something to note about fabric is that it shifts, it moves, it breathes, and sometimes the holes might not be so easy to find. So right now I am ready to go in and screw these in, but I want to acknowledge the fact that getting to this part where the alignments are all there and the screws are ready to go back in might be a little tricky i put all of these screws in about halfway with them kind of in place find the middle align the um the alignment pieces the way you want them pull these up so that they don't interfere and it's gonna take a little bit of finessing. I'm, I promise you that um, it's not as easy as I probably made it seem in the first video, but if you kind of just swivel around until you get your pieces, you're gonna see it come together. So there you go, everything is aligned, and now all you have to do is put these bad boys back in with your screwdriver. You wanna make sure that your screws are straight because if they're crooked, again, it's going to alter the integrity of the piece. If you're going in straight, then you should have no problems. Don't over tighten. As soon as you feel some resistance, that's when you should stop. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty sturdy. It's not going anywhere. So this part is where you're gonna adjust to bend the bar so that you can access the baby with ease. And that goes on the same side as the speaker. So if you, for example, put it on this way, where the bendy part is at the back, you've done it wrong. This goes in the fabric here. Expose all of that. There's the opening there. Put that in there. And wait for that click it's in this is going to be wrapped around like that do the other side and then you could put your arms back in again it's labeled so find your B part with your B part and your A part with your A part fish it through it's fabric it will bend it will move it shouldn't be too hard to get it back in once it's back in, take one side, line it up, the other side, line it up. That pin, you want it to go in and snap into place. Same thing with the B side, B, snap into place. Do it one more time. You wanna line these puppies up. Push that pin in. Get it like that. 
it's not meant to be so firm but it's firm enough that it is it stands up so there's no saggy bits you want to put this bad boy back put these bad boys back like that nothing is loose everything is where it's supposed to be the part that bends bends and that bends towards the front this is the front put your mattress in something to note you do not want to wash the mattress the sheet comes off just wash the sheet okay and you can wash the sheet as many times as you so please and that bassinet is ready it's secure baby's not gonna fall out of it I mean I could probably fit in here and not break it the bassinet is back together and it's all gravy baby <laughs> When you come back from a cutaway and like no time has passed for us and you're just like, wow, that was amazing. <laughs> it, it wasn't that difficult. I mean, I did chip my nail, which I don't get my nails done. But if you do, you might want to not do it yourself. Maybe somebody else can do it for you. And I think that the important part to mention as to why my husband is here with me, because the first time he's the one who actually did it. Um, he took it apart, he washed it, he did everything. I was nine months pregnant at the time. I was nine months pregnant at the time. Yeah, it was like a week before she was born. Yeah, so it was so. really early. So there was no way I was gonna be the one doing it. Um, and this time around, I did it because I wanted to make sure that you saw me do it so that you knew for a fact, like the hands that you saw in the other video were his hands. He did it, you did it. You put it together and our babies were safe. I don't want to come across as though I'm not um, acknowledging your pain, your suffering, your hardship. I get it. Um, when you're bringing in a new baby into the world, you are on edge. You're definitely on edge. Um, you want everything to be perfect, especially if it's your first baby. I acknowledge your feelings. Um, I know that that's a very, very um, delicate time of life where you're bringing a new baby, you wanna make sure everything is perfect. I, I kind of pride myself in in being true to my word and true to you know what it is that we do on this channel. I don't wanna come across, number one, like I know everything, because I, I don't. I don't wanna come across as the world's best parent because I know that I'm not. One thing I wanna do is live, live my truth in, in that I believe that I am the best mom for the three kids that I was given. I'm, I am their mother and I'm meant to be. You're their father and you're meant to be. Um, and if we thought that we were harming our children by reusing the old bassinet or taking it apart to wash it and put it back together, we wouldn't have put our children in it. <laughs> exactly. And it's funny because you asked me to take it apart and put it back together. I didn't know that you already knew that it could be done. Mm -hmm. I was just going based off of, I'm a hands-on guy, I build things for a living, and how hard could it be? That was my mentality. It was never a thought of, now we're gonna show other people how to do it who might not be as experienced in taking things apart or building things. The other thing to mention too is that if we ran into problems the first time around, we would have either not made the video or we would have mentioned those major issues. We had none of those things. Um, it was pretty simple. Yeah, I think all told, without ever taking it apart before, um, not including washing it, it took me about a half an hour to take it took apart me a and little put back longer. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> struggled with the pins. Those pins, oh my gosh. But yeah, all three kids used the bassinet. It, we now don't need it, thank God we have Three babies that sleep through the night. They're sleeping now. They're sleeping now, and I'm so grateful. None of them are sleeping in the bassinet, and none of them are sleeping in our room now. So it's it's great. We get to sleep through the night, and our babies are all very, very safe, um, healthy, thriving, and we're so happy to be parents of three wonderful kids. It is, it's doable, and it can, be done and it can save you a lot of money now I'm not telling you that you have to do it you don't have to do it you can buy yourself a new a new bassinet you could put your baby in, on the floor you could put your baby in a box you do what you feel is best for your children and your family 
and we'll do what's best for us. Exactly. The bassinet is a beautiful thing. I, I enjoy using it. I think that it is aesthetically pleasing. It's like, it looks good. It looks good in the room. It's not an eyesore. It is breathable, beautiful fabric, comfortable for baby. It is something that I, I hope to use again. Um, and I stand by it and I stand by my decision to take it apart and wash it. Um, washing it gave me peace of mind knowing that as my new baby was coming in to the home that she had a beautiful and clean place to sleep and um, yeah just thank you guys so much for just riding with us and for being a part of the couch mom club and for subscribing and for watching and for commenting and engaging every little bit counts even the negative comments um, again I apologize if you felt that I over encouraged you to do something that you feel was wrong to do. But again, this video is not a means to encourage you to do anything. It's a means for me to share with you what I've done. And should you find help if you'd like to do it too, you have a video reference and it's right here. And there's so many more video references too. Until next time. Here are some really cool Couch Mom Club videos for you to enjoy. And don't forget to join the club. Why'd you get out of frame? Join the club. Go no, ahead. Because you had to move over to make room for the videos oh, that are there. Oh, I didn't move. <laughs> Until next time, here are some cool Couch Mom Club videos for you to enjoy. And don't forget to join the club. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you never miss an upload. Also, follow me on all your favorite social media accounts. And don't forget to check out the merch. The links will be in the description right below the like button. And now it's time to get off the couch and into life.